Charles Row way. Just lying in the desert. Getting close to prayer time. Everyone's marching towards the mosque. It's quite funny to see. It's quite amazing to watch, I've got to be honest. Everyone's just descending in the same direction. So we're heading north to try and find uh, two areas where there's a load of derelict trains that just been kind of left to rot, uh, like out in the desert. Um, waiting for this petrol station to refuel so we can actually get some fuel so we can actually uh, drive out of uh, Medina. It's also Friday, so there's Friday prayers going on. Um, which means that a lot of places are closed right now. Good for us because it means the, the roads are nice and quiet and calm and we can drive around without any major, major stress. Uh, so it's really, really nice to have the roads nice and quiet, but uh, we, we don't have any fuel. But it should be a good day. Absolutely blazing hot already and it's not even April. So we'll see how we get on. Well, so your, your first impression of Medina? Uh, Bearing in mind that you, you have actually been I've before. seen it once before, but only at the <laughs> night. Seeing it in the daytime, yeah, the landscape. Oh, is, yeah, the mountains. It's fantastic. It's really silly, amazing. Really. Oh, yeah. It's a mini tornado. Look at that. Oh, man. Yeah, Bawaya. There are some of those old black buildings there. Bawaya. That must be the old train station then. There must be a station. Because they're all the same, as you said. Oh, look, there's one. There's a train. Yep. Yeah. One that's been restored. Oh yeah, it's got the engine as well and the carriages. One that's been restored, but there's a few other people here. Archaeological area, unlawful to trespass. No, I didn't see it. Oh there it is, look. Oh yeah. What is it, a carriage that's been burnt out? Let's go a little bit onto where it goes flat here. We've managed to find these old they're like burnt out trains, burnt out carriages. There's a prayer time going on, so there's a guy on the minaret who's kind of talking over me, but hopefully you can hear me. I've got a little thing on here. Wow, it's literally just the, the metal frame that's left. I'm gonna take you around this little site here. It's not even fenced off. There's an area that's fenced off. These old trains aren't actually fenced off at all. So we're kind of free to walk around, well, until we get into trouble. I don't think we're gonna get in trouble, but. So you can see here, the whole carriage has been kind of turned over. That entire carriage is just sitting here. But the Laker. All right. No way, that's a Angler. 3062. So the Arab revolt was around 1917 and it started in sort of March time. So it's about 100 and, so you're looking at about 105 years ago. These trains probably would have been taken out by the kind of Arab revolt at the time. And they've just sat here ever since. Pretty crazy. This is the footplate for, oh, what for? Oh, for stepping up, right, yeah. And you've still got the, like the hooks here, look. Yeah, and, and the, uh, the buffer. The buffer. Wow, look at the engineering in this. Someone at some point has uh, 
taken a few things from here. I don't think it's been on fire actually, I think it's just been stripped. Yeah, I think it's been stripped and then just rocked. Yeah, because this wouldn't have. Yeah, because that wouldn't that would have been burnt away. drive over then and have a look at the one that's uh, yeah. restored or in good condition. Mill Hejaz Station. And there's a couple of kind of derelict kind of I'm not really sure how to describe them. They look like they've been blown off the tracks. But there's two trains here with carriages that have been kind of left to rot in the desert. We're gonna get a little bit closer and have a and have a better look. Absolutely no one here. Well we assume there's no one here. And there's two there's a couple of station buildings here. Again, have kind of been kind of left. Uh, doesn't look like there's much sign of restoration here. Everything's just been sort of left. Nothing to stop us from getting in. We're going to come in and have a look around. Well, it's a bit windy here now, right out in the desert, uh, trying to track down these Hejaz trains or the, the derelict remnants of the Hejaz Railway. You've got to ask yourself is, what did the Ottomans do for us? Well, as it turns out, they built a pretty amazing uh, railway system that ran from Damascus, which is obviously now Syria, all the way down to Medina on the west side of Saudi Arabia. This was completed in 1910, literally a few years before the outbreak of the First World War. It was in 1917, literally March, the 25th, 100, almost 105 years ago to the very day when a young English officer was basically tasked to go out to the desert. His mission was to gather as many Arab Bedouin tribes as possible so that he can form a bit of a ragtag army so they're able to sabotage sections of the Hejaz Railway. And he blew up bridges and he derailed trains and he did all sorts of things to try and cripple the Ottomans' presence in the region. And that, of course, was Lawrence of Arabia. And they eventually succeeded. So the trains here now, you can see the train behind me and the train behind me here. These, this is the remnants of the Hejaz Railway. So this part of what is now Saudi Arabia would have literally been at the mercy of the Arab uprising at the time to try and kick the Ottomans out of the country. So that we think that these trains were just kind of probably sabotaged, they were derailed, blown up, 
set on fire, possibly. I mean, we don't really know what happened to them, but they're certainly not in, in working condition anymore. <laughs> that is for sure. So it's in interesting to know what the real story is behind these trains. A hundred years later, these trains are still here, lying in the desert. And this whole area has been fenced off. We were able to get in because someone cut a hole in the fence. That's the only reason why we, we managed to get in. I'm quite pleased we did. This is literally really quite historic uh, site when you think about it. Because this was very much a turning point in the war. You know, without crippling this railway system, um, well, Saudi, Saudi Arabia wouldn't exist as a country. But also crippling this railway system meant that you're stopping the supplies, um, munitions, food and other resources from getting further up the line to help the war effort. So in many ways, the Arab revolt and, and the missions that Lawrence of Arabia did in this region of the world had a huge impact on the, on the turning point of the First World War. Actually quite amazing. Look at this old engine here. Literally just, just lying in the desert. That's quite amazing. Right, first death trap of the day. Wow. All right. I have a feeling this is probably not safe. <laughs> this is a bit bonkers. Look at this. It's an old station house has been kind of abandoned and left. Uh, have a little look around, but I don't think we should spend too much time here, I've got to be honest. It does look quite dangerous. Wow, look at this. Well, people have been here. People have been here, there's some old bottles been left around graffiti and some people have been using it obviously but kind of half expecting a, a snake to come jumping out any minute or <laughs> something crazy wow yeah oh yeah yeah look at that so we could climb up if we wanted to but um i think i'm going to decline that and inside as well, you've got to, uh, it's not worth the risk, got to be honest. I mean, getting into this was, was bad enough. Yeah, yeah. Jumping well, over this, this jumping over this death trap. Let's, uh, let's climb out and uh, see what else there is. Actually walking along the top of the railway track here, this bit of land's raised up and it leads towards that train over there, or the remains of that train over there. So this, I think, probably would have been where the track was. Look at that. So what do we have here then? It's another water pump, isn't it? Oh yeah, look, there's a little bit of track left over. This train is literally sitting on its track. Well, maybe it was just left, left to rot. This carriage has clearly been, been toppled over though, hasn't it? Look at that. It's clearly been rolled over. That's a bit crazy. Yeah, here, look. I'll take a little souvenir with me. A bit of Hejaz train wood. Back in the day, this was the, the way to get around. There was no other way, really, to get around quickly and efficiently and, and cost-effectively.
let's find the exit I think probably the best thing I think it's time to go home before someone comes and sees us and uh, kicks us out where's Mike Mike station houses but yeah probably best that we don't go in there that's a bit of a death trap I think that's probably the end now of our little Hejaz railway adventure just outside Medina goodbye goodbye Ottomans Saudi Arabia you tell people not to do something they're gonna do the exact opposite so you build a fence someone's gonna gonna break through it and get in and do whatever they want so there we go a little hedge hours adventure all right so back to the car and our long trek back to Medina for a bit of Haram we're okay aren't we uh, yeah, we're close to where we came in, aren't we? Yeah. 